What is up guys? This is Zach from Angler's Escape and today I'm making a how-to video on using a fishing lure for the beginner. So I'm actually the president and founder of the UMKC or University of Missouri Kansas City Fishing Club. I volunteered at a lot of fishing derbies, helped a lot of people start fishing with lures. I want to show you the five main types, how to fish them, and some tips and tricks along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. So diving right in, I want to show you kind of what pole to use for fishing lures. Generally anything with about 8 to 10 pound test line, monofilament is great. Here I just have an open cast spin reel. This is only about 20 bucks at the store. So 8 to 10 pound test line. And then in general, basically the whole concept of a lure is to mimic a bait. So in this case, this lure is just mimicking a minnow. It could be mimicking, or mimicking a bluegill for bass, a minnow for crappie, uh, a little worm, but lures you have to continually work because they're an inanimate object and you have to make them animated. So unlike baits where you just cast out like a minnow or worm, you cast out, you let it sit, and you wait for the fish to come along and find it, a lure you're gonna have to constantly be casting and retrieving or reeling in to give it a lifelike give it action or animate it so that fish will think it's real and alive and bite it. So let's go ahead and get started with the first class of lures and that is the crankbait. So right here I have a few crankbaits. These you'll see in every store. Some of my favorite crankbaits are right here, especially for bass. These are great for ponds, lakes, rivers. Right here I have a small square bill. These are really good for ponds because the bill keeps them diving pretty shallowly. So basically with these, and my favorite brand would be a KV or a Kevin Van Dam 1.5, and I'll put a link for the Amazon link if you want to buy this off Amazon in the video description. But basically with these, you want to retrieve them just fast enough that there's a nice tight wobble. And every time you cast out, so let's say here's another lure right here, all these crankbaits, what you're doing, you're casting out about as far as you can. It doesn't have to be in the middle of the lake. It could be basically five feet from the shoreline, and you can work at diag parallel from the bank, just all different angles. When I'm retrieving it, I'm just doing a really slow retrieving and see about how fast I'm reeling in right now. Not super fast. And every once in a while, I'll pause it, the lure, and then give it a little twitch. Sometimes when you pause it for a second, it allows the fish that's hunting it to catch up and then strike it. And then if you give it a little twitch here and there, that can give it some more action. But whenever you get the lure close to the surface or getting back to you, just make sure it's swimming okay and it looks like it has a good action. So, and the key is, is always just change up your speeds too if you're not catching fish. Sometimes a little faster is better. Um, sometimes a little slower if they're a little lethargic, if it's really hot or cold. But in general, you're not going too fast. You're casting it way out, and then immediately after you cast it, just start retrieving it back in. Nice, slow, steady pace. Every once in a while, you pause it, and then after you pause it, you can give it a little twitch, and then continue reeling in again. And always make sure that the lure is spinning okay when you get it close to the shore. So that's generally how you work one of these crankbaits. And now let's go on, and these are some of my favorites. Again, I really like the jointed crankbait and the square build crankbait. And then the one I had on my pole is a Rapella floating minnow. These are great crankbaits. And now let's move on to category number two, and that's inline spinners and also like a big bass spinner. So the inline spinners are probably my favorite all around lure for the beginner just because they catch such a wide variety of fish. So I've caught trout, I've caught bluegill, I've caught bass, I've caught crappie, I've caught even catfish on these inline spinners. Pretty much a little bit of everything. My favorite brand has to be Panther Martin. Also like Blue Fox and South Bend inline spinners. But these, you don't even need a swivel. You tie it just straight onto your main line, just like these crankbaits. And these blades spin like this. And these you want to retrieve just fast enough or reel in just fast enough that that blade is spinning. And you don't really need to retrieve it much faster than that. So just like the crankbaits, again, you can pause it every once in a while and then give it a little twitch. But in general, you're casting out and you're basically doing a really slow retrieve just fast enough that that blade spins. And so when you, again, when you get it really close to the bank, you can see it if it's spinning or not. And if that thing is spinning right here, then you're going at a good clip. And you can always, again, change up your speed a little bit if you're not catching fish and try to hone in on the given day how fast they want that lure retrieve. But generally, you're not cranking it down really fast. It's just a nice, slow, steady retrieve every once in a while. You can pause it and then twitch it again. Then we have a bigger, basically, this is similar to an inline spinner, but this is just a big spinner bait. And these are about a dollar at Walmart. But you tie your line on right here, right to your main line. And again, it won't twist up your line because all that spinning is this. And this is freely spinning. And this basically is mimicking a bluegill is all that it's doing. So these small inline spinners are mimicking a minnow. These are just mimicking a bluegill. So you constantly throw it out, retrieve it. Just make sure this blade's spinning really well. Every once in a while, pop it around. Really easy to do. The third class of lures that I really like are jigs. So you have football jigs, which are bigger ones for bass. And these, what you do is usually they're pretty heavy weighted. And so what they do is they sink down to the bottom. And then once they hit the bottom, you jerk it up and then let it sink again and go back down. And then you jerk it up and you let it sink again. 
So you're constantly with jigs, you're just twitching your line constantly. So the other ones, it's more of a slow, steady retrieve every once in a while of the twitch. Here it's you twitch it, you reel in a little bit, you let it sink. And then after it sinks a little bit, you twitch it, you reel it in, and you let it sink. And a lot of times those fish hit it when it's sinking. And so you'll also notice that there's all these little wires right here, and you're like, wire that here? This is basically to keep it from getting snagged on stuff. So if you're going through a lot of brush and other things, this wire will keep the brush from getting on the hook, but when a fish bites down on it, it'll expose the hook and hook the fish. So this is a nice weedless football jig, but then also there's smaller jigs for things like crappie, bluegill. Here's a little marabou jig, they're super cheap. Here's a little plastic two jib, and then you can take a jig head like this and basically just pop it in the top and thread it through, pop it out the bottom, and then move it up like that. And now you have your jig ready to go. And these are great for crappie, bluegill. I've caught lots of trout on them. But again, these are your kind of twitching. You let it sink, you twitch a little bit, you let it sink, but you constantly have to work them because you have to mimic a minnow. If it's just sitting there, it just looks like a stick or something if you're not giving it that action. The fourth type of lure that I want to mention is plastic. So you've probably seen a lot of plastic worms. Bass really do love plastic worms. I like these type of lures right here, just kind of a long tail, and you cast these out. And these, a lot of times, again, it's kind of like a jig where I let it sink, I reel it in a little bit, let it sink to the back down to the bottom, I twitch it back up, let it sink a little bit, and then sometimes I'll do more of a slow, steady retrieve. This tail really spins around. Then bass lures, if you guys want to look up a Carolina rig, it's a really good rig for these lures. Um, they kind of fish them like a jig. And then here's another little worm, basically. This one, there's some weight on the hook and there's a little spinner so this will weigh it down and again you're just kind of twitching it letting it rise up go through the water column like at a real slow speed and then go back down and then rise up go back down and again vary your speeds a lot kind of a reoccurring theme throughout this the fifth type of lure guys is a spoon now spoons are great all around lure whether it's fresh water salt water these you have to be careful because it can really spin up your line because really the whole spoon is what's spinning in this case and making it look like a live fish where in inline spinners you're only spinning this little blade so these you can tie directly on your main line and not get tangled too bad because it's just this that's spinning here if this whole thing is spinning and it's tied to your main line your whole main line is going to get twisted up so that's why you need to put something like a swivel on it so then it can spin freely and not twist up your main line but these are also good for bass and everything but just to recap guys if i was a beginner and i was starting to fish whether it was a pond or a lake I would go with a crankbait. I really love the square build crankbaits. They're shallow diving, so especially if you're starting off by shore fishing, they're excellent for bass. I caught tons and tons of bass on a 1.5 KVD square crankbait. And then also what I would pick up is some inline spinners, whether those are Panther Martin, South Bend, or Blue Fox inline spinners. One last tip for fishing with lures, guys, is always change your time, location, and the lures you're using. Because it might be that maybe at midday at 1 p.m. the fish just aren't biting, so that's why you're not catching anything. It's not the lure's fault, it's just the time of day. So come back at dawn, dusk, also change up your location. Ponds are a great place to start. Go on Google Maps, look at local areas. See if you can find a creek, a pond, a small lake by you. I would say ponds are one of the best areas to start out with because it kind of condenses the fish. Like big lakes, there's bigger fish and maybe more fish, but they're more spread out. And usually there's the rule, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water a lot of the time. So what that means, if you're fishing a big body of water, you might be fishing in that 90% that doesn't have a whole lot of fish. And then the 10% that does have a whole lot of fish, you're just not in that area. Where a pond, you can kind of access all the areas, walk around it until you find those fish. So mix up your time and locations, mix up the lure speeds. And guys, as always, I hope you have the best of luck fishing and thanks for watching.